Welcome to the Elite Life Podcast. With your hosts, Trisha and Kylie. Here, we guide you on a journey of personal and professional transformation. Revealing the secrets to success. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, join us as we unlock the doors to the elite world of growth, grit, and grace. So, let's dive in. Welcome, friends, to another episode of the Elite Life Podcast. I'm Kylie, that's Trisha, and today we are diving into recharging your mind. Is that what we're talking about? We're talking about <laughs> mindfulness <laughs> in nature, specifically here in our beautiful state of Michigan. This is for our Michiganders. If you're in another state, though, this is applicable as well. But we are going to talk about um, some specific things because it is fall in Michigan, which is absolutely magical. You can see I have sweater weather, um, the colors, the crisp air, the sense of change. It all creates the perfect backdrop for mindfulness. You know, we like to dive into mental health. It's very important. And today we're going to talk about how getting out in nature can really help you to center yourself and find peace, especially as life gets busier during the fall season. We're leading up to the holidays. Exactly. I'm already exhausted just thinking about back to school, then Halloween, then Thanksgiving, then Christmas, then New Year's. I'm done. I'm already, I need like a cigarette and a cheeseburger. I know we're in 2025 (laughs) in my brain. So we're going to explore how mindfulness practices can be integrated into your outdoor adventures. And we'll name some of our favorite favorite spots around Michigan where you can truly connect with nature, whether you're looking for a peaceful walk or a scenic drive or something a bit more adventurous, you are in the right spot, my friends. Yeah. And we're going to share some mindfulness exercises you can do while you're out there. So if you're ready to slow down and embrace the beauty of fall in Michigan, this episode's for you. Yay. So let's start by talking about why mindfulness in nature is so powerful. And I'm going to let Mrs. Educated over there. (laughs) So Trisha, when you think of mindfulness, what comes to mind? You like what I did there? I do. And actually, like I was thinking about this this morning because mindfulness is being fully present in the moment. It's not worrying about the past or the future. It's not being on your cell phone. I was walking the trail this morning. I've been meeting um, Tracy Peterson, one of our agents, Eddie Lee, and our friend Susie. I've been meeting them at the um, South Lion Rail Trail. We're meeting in West Bloomfield. It goes all the way through like most of the state of Michigan. And we meet at 615. It's still dark out. And then we walk the trail and we get to see deer and bunnies and all of this nature as the sun comes up Mm. and it's beautiful we don't touch our phones today was the first time I was out there and there's like all of these and it was guys it was not women um that were on their phones and so they're walking but they're screaming at the people on their phones and they're all stressed out and I'm like y'all It is 7 a.m. Like, Like, what are you doing? Yeah, turn, leave your phone in your car and just be tuned into what's happening around you right now. Like, nature has a way of helping us to be able to do that because it's so grounding. And there's just something about being surrounded by trees and, like, really listening to, like, the rustle of leaves and feeling the wind on your skin and, like, just really tuning into, like, where you are at right now. And then just the gratitude that comes along with it. Like, just... This is a beautiful day and I'm and I'm out here. I woke up early. I'm alive. I'm feeling all these great feelings like life is good. Life is good. But there's actually some science behind it, too. So studies have shown that spending time in nature can reduce stress. Mm -hmm. It can improve your mood and it can even enhance your cognitive function. So the way that your brain is working. So it helps you unplug from the hustle and bustle of daily life and reconnect with yourself in a more meaningful way. And we just got back um, from a trip to our cabin, which is literally in the middle of like 57,000 acres. It's just nowhere. And um, I'm sorry, I missed the meeting, but I was unplugged. <laughs> it was, it really was an amazing experience because there were a few times where I did turn on my phone to try and check in. My mom's on a trip too. So we just checked in with each other and made sure everything was fine. 
But I will tell you, you guys, like I went a whole day and a half with my phone either being dead or out of service. The moment I got service and that thing came back on, it was ringing. It was ringing. It was beeping. It was buzzing. And I looked at Ryan after I had made my like essential phone calls. I threw my phone at him. I was like, take this outside and bury it somewhere. (laughs) Like I am done. And truly, you know, it was so amazing to do the things like Trisha just said, just walk, be with our family. We had conversations. We played best, worst, weirdest, like our kids got the attention. And it was really an amazing time to just unplug, reconnect with my family, reconnect with nature, and really just get rejuvenated to come back and be my best self. Yeah. So like we each said, it doesn't it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as a morning walk or it can be as intentional as some days off the grid like you. Um, So let's get to the good stuff. Where can our listeners go if they really want to get away and do it right? So let's start with Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park. This is in the UP, which is the Upper Peninsula for y'all who are not in Michigan. So it's an amazing place to visit um, in the fall because the forests are just thick and they are vibrant with like the reds and the oranges and the purples and the yellows. Plus, you've got Lake Superior right there, which adds another layer of tranquility. Lake Superior is my personal favorite, especially in the fall because it's like the scariest and the creepiest and the coldest <laughs> and the deepest. Um, but it really just brings you back to, you know, we get so focused on all of our problems and all of our stressors and what's going on in our lives. And And being next to a lake that you literally cannot see across really just reminds you of how small you actually are and how small your problems actually are. And in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that bad. (laughs) It's really not. And everything is fine. So... Um, so you've got Lake Superior right there. Um, and then the Escarpment Trail. Am I saying that right? OK, um, that offers you like if you go down it, um, you've got like peaks and, and views and like little crop outs where you can see the lake or you can sit and enjoy the sun. It's just really scenic and really, really beautiful. I love that. And another spot that is perfect um, in the fall is Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lake Shore. Yes. So- Yes. Me and Dave will actually be going over there um, in, I forget if it's September, October, soon. And we are doing an adventure race. And it goes through Sleeping Bear Dunes um, National Lake Shore. So there's, it's just very calming walking along like the massive sand dunes in Lake Michigan. Um, there's the Pierce Stocking Scenic Drive, which offers more incredible views. You can do uh, the dune climb. So you're getting in mindful movement, a little bit exercise, and you can really pay attention to kind of each step as you ascend and descend. So it's peaceful, but you also get like that, those happy chemicals from getting your workout in um, and you're doing it. I like when you can do a quote unquote workout, but it's just part of enjoying an experience. Absolutely. And we'll have to go through the story of Sleeping Bear Dunes another day because like it is such a beautiful but also really sad story. Um, but I I love it up there. It is just like, especially when the sun is going down and it's just all, it's just like fire across all of the grass and all of the sand and it's reflecting off of the water. It is so centering. It is an amazing experience. Absolutely wonderful. Um, so next, uh, we've got the... Matahi Botanical Gardens and the Nichols Arboretorium. Arboretum? How do you say that? You're from Arboretum. 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 So that sounds like something that would be on like. It's like a big greenhouse. Yeah. No, I know what it is. It just sounds like burrito. So now (laughs) I'm hungry. No. So this is in Ann Arbor. So. This has a bunch of beautiful trails through the woods. Have you been there? Have you been there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's been a while, but my first go around at U of M, um, this was one of the places that I did go. I love that. So you can practice walking. It's a great place for meditation because there's lots of little spots where you can just kind of pop off the trail, sit under a tree, find a rock, find a stump, and just be quiet 
and quiet your inner voice. Dude, I love Ann Arbor in the fall. I will tell you, oh, I'm, it's I'm going back to I'm going back to campus um next week and it is my favorite just to walk around there. Like literally the whole campus you can sit and meditate bring a hammock put it up in the quad like just chill in the law quads like there's so many things to see and enjoy and just and the be people watching of. is amazing oh yeah or frustrating sure. depending sure. on how you look at it no, right? I, I love everything about ann arbor in the fall it's just a beautiful place to be it really is is that where you're moving next you're gonna get a condo in ann arbor dude that place so expensive oh, <laughs> i've seen a, a sign for apartments and I was like, maybe I could just get an apartment so I don't have to drive from Clarkston and Arbor, like just for one year, just to finish my degree. And I looked it up. It was like three thousand dollars for a one bedroom apartment. I'm like, yeah. yeah, no, no, I'll keep driving. That's I'll fine. Driving. I'm just gonna spend that in gas. That's <laughs> all good. It's all good. Okay, what's next? Uh, another hidden gem is the Hartwick Pine State Park in Grayling. So this is home to one of the largest remaining old growth forests in Ooh. Michigan. Um, there is just something very peaceful about walking among those like towering trees, and some of are hundreds of years old. Yeah, over three hundred years old. In That's this crazy. Space. Yeah, over three hundred years old. Like I, it's so wild. Like if trees could talk, imagine like over three hundred years. Um, but you feel so small, but in the best possible way. Like it's just like cozy. The trees and... would be like, y'all have lost your damn minds. <laughs> you all have lost your minds. Um, if you're looking for more of an urban option, Belle Isle Park is amazing. You've got a beautiful escape kind of within the city of Detroit. You can walk along the Detroit River, explore the gardens. There's lots of gardens. Um, or you could just sit by the water, watch the boats go by. There are spots where you can do some fishing. And it's really a great place to practice mindful breathing, just like focusing on the rhythm of the the river, you know, the sounds of the city in the distance. Um, I've been down there a couple of times in my life, and it is just a really different experience because when you're from like the metro Detroit area, um, especially if you are closer to Detroit, Detroit, um, if you're not right inside the city, but you know, you're, you're like Redford, Ferndale, Oak Park, stuff like that. Um, you don't have a ton of options to just like go walking in the woods, you know? Yeah. So there's not a lot of nature down there. And Belle Isle Park is um, just a great way to just kind of pick up on some of that and just enjoy that for a little bit. Yeah, I've run a couple 5K races downtown and we always run on to Belle Isle and they've really made, like if you haven't been down there and you live in the area where you can, the river walk they've redone it's all awesome. the river walk. it's beautiful it's, it's absolutely beautiful. beautiful and i love when you can catch like especially in the fall they have um they'll have like art fairs or mm. food fairs or they'll have music going on um a lot of times on a weekend you can catch some super fun stuff to be a part of too yeah. So the last spot that we're going to mention, um, and I'm going to butcher this one. It's Tequamanon. I went Tequamanon. there for Oh, Tequamanon Falls is so beautiful. Well, then you tell us about it. Okay, so it's in the UP. So Ryan and I went there for our honeymoon. I had never been there before. Um, I don't know if he had either, but... Um, when you're it's a good long walk it's a good long walk so make sure you have some shoes so you can really appreciate um, just walking the trail next to the falls and you can just see all of this water just traveling down the falls are absolutely gorgeous they are huge because um, we go to Akiak Falls which is by our cabin but those are ones like you can get under and go swimming in like and um, these are just like it, it's just so amazing the power the force of nature and it really just um kind of reminds you that um you know life is fleeting right and as you're watching all of these lo these huge i mean i remember seeing like half a bloody tree just like boop 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 going right down the river hitting all the rocks and things like that and it just again reminds you that you know life is simple and it doesn't have to be complicated, but there are so many things in this world that are so powerful. It is just a magnanimous reminder, again, that you are just a small person and everything is fine and tomorrow will be another day and you can just go chasing waterfalls. 
Well, and I think it's so interesting because as you're talking about that, I'm thinking like how many people that live in Michigan even think that there's waterfalls in Michigan? Like I would never a lot think of, people of don't Michigan know. as a waterfall place. So make sure you guys like you share this. some rocks and some water. Yeah. Share the episode with your friends and like re-listen and write down all these places. It's free. Drive to these places and enjoy the nature that we have surrounding us. And like, let's talk about um, some of the mindfulness exercises you can do while you're out there. Because there's some simple practices that can really help you connect a little more deeply with nature and with yourself. Like if you're like me, sometimes it, it takes a bit for me to just like calm down that central Sim nervous down. system. Sim yeah. down now. Like, oh, I have to be calm. I have to enjoy this. Okay, right? So let's talk about some of that. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorites is called 54321 Grounding. So it's a great way to... Anchor yourself in the present moment by using your senses. And this is one that's great for me because a lot of times I will get overstimulated. Mm -hmm. My senses, like my kids, life, the phone, everything. And taking a deep breath um, and just kind of what I'll do is I'll take a deep breath. And then I'll go five, four, three, two, one. And then I'll do it a couple times and I will close my eyes a lot. And I will just listen to what's going on around me. I will feel what's on my skin. I will sometimes sit down. Sometimes I'll do this standing up. Sometimes I take my shoes off and I'm walking in the grass or I'm standing in the mud. Um, it's just a really great way, um, you know, to be present and using the senses that God gave you. So you can do it on a trail. You can do it sitting by a lake. You can start by noticing um, some things that you can see and hear. So I like to close my eyes and I, because I use my eyes a lot. So I'll close my eyes and I'll breathe out and I'll listen and I will listen for the birds and I will listen to the squirrels scampering through the leaves and I will hear the rush of water if I'm by a lake or a river. And I will just point these things out to myself. And then um, so you start with five things. You pick five things. Then you move to four things. Then you move to three things. And then you move to two things and then one thing. So, you know, you can start by pointing out five things that you hear, four things that you see, three things that you feel, two things that you um, uh, that you can see or whatever. Anyways, I don't recommend licking anything in the woods. That's the sense that I usually leave out. <laughs> well, you can taste what the taste is in your mouth. Right? Yeah, and sometimes too, like especially if um, what I do love about the fall season is when you can sometimes this in here in Michigan, you can you can gulp the air and you can literally taste and smell the rain coming. You can smell the snow coming. I don't know if that happens for other people. Maybe I'm a weirdo. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Another exercise you can do is walking meditation. So instead of um, walking with a destination in mind, focus on the actual process of walking itself. So you pay attention to each step. Like, how does your foot feel as it touches the ground? How does your body shift your weight? Um, it's it's about being just fully present and again like you were saying engaging all of your senses you know like you mentioned what are five things that I can see what are five things that I can touch when you're walking what do your pants feel like on your legs what does your shirt feel like on your body if you have airpods in what do those feel like in your ears it helps you to um, be mindful and connect but also it helps to implement core memories so I learned the the five four three two one um, from a therapist that was doing a podcast and they were talking about like if you are in a moment that you want to make sure that you will remember stop and note five things that you see four things that you feel. And again, you can feel your clothes on you. You can feel your toes in your shoes, things like that. Um, the smells, the sights. So you go through all of your senses and you ground them and that creates a core memory in your mind. So the same with this, when you're doing a walking meditation, you're helping yourself to connect it so it becomes a core memory in your mind. And it's not just you're floating through life, right? Science. 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 Um, and then there's breathing, right? Don't forget to breathe, uh, taking deep breaths and smelling the air and finding a quiet spot and closing your eyes and just focusing on the sound of your breath coming in and going out and what that feels like and what it tastes like. That's what I got for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, this has been a fun one. As we talked about, moments out in nature can be very powerful. And since we've shared our own stories, you can see how much they can really help you to connect and create some great memories, some great moments, and just bring you back to a more peaceful and simple state in your in your mind and your body, which we all need. Yeah, absolutely. So we hope you enjoyed this little chit chat. And um, please share the show, like the episode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we drop fresh content every single Thursday here on Elite Life. So make sure you come back next week. Bye. Thank you for joining us today on the Elite Life Podcast with Trish and Kylie. Don't forget to share this episode with a friend so we can keep delivering you more fantastic insights on grit, grace, and growth. Stay connected with us on Instagram and Facebook where we'll keep the ideas flowing to help you build a life you love and leave a legacy you can be proud of. Until next time.